Hi folks, um, so in this video basically I just wanted to uh, look at some of the old footage that I had uh, from September of last year. So I have uh, footage of Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Um, so what I was think, uh, what I thought I would do is that I'll just show how I do processing on the video and uh, how you can get some good quality images out of the video footage that you take of these planets. Uh, so what you see, are you seeing on the screen right now, uh, it looks like the moon but it's actually Venus. Um, it's in the crescent phase of uh, Venus and uh, uh, since it's low on the horizon, um, there's a lot of seeing or that disturbance that you see in the image, the waviness uh, of the image that you see. Um, actually even in the other planets you would see that because most of the time I just uh, view out of the window uh, of my apartment towards the western side of the sky and usually it's uh, closer to the horizon than uh, you know, straight up. So if you observe straight up then usually the seeing would be a lot lesser but obviously in case of a planet like Venus most of the time it would be close to the horizon but in case of the other planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Mars etc you can actually uh, get better images by looking straight up rather than closer to the horizon. So the equipment that I'm using, uh, the mount is uh, my CEM 25P. So I've got better tracking now, even with just rough, um, very rough uh, polar alignment. And the telescope is my GSO 6 inch uh, Newtonian scope. It's an F5 scope. Mm. For imaging, I'm using a Nikon 1J5 mirrorless camera and um, it basically I'm using eyepiece projection so um, there's probably an 8mm because I use a zoom eyepiece so it can vary anywhere between 24 to 8mm so I usually will be using an 8mm uh, eyepiece over probably a 3x barlow in most cases so yeah and what you're seeing on the screen right now is the processed image after I put it through auto stockard and and then a little bit further processing on digit stacks so you get a better clearer image and I've tried to remove that fringe and yeah so this is what we have as a processed image of Venus next we can go over to Jupiter Jupiter you can see this band it's a line I've Saturn this is Jupiter. And this is a dot on the top. No, no. This is the ice card. Mars. Yes, I'm recording. 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 I'm अभी नहीं कर सकते जाना है हम्म अभी स्टार्स देखा काम जस्ट स्टार्स हम्म स्टार्स देखो बाहर देखो वहाँ पे स्टार देखो हाँ फिर इसका फोटो लेके वो चीज डालिस को ओके so what you were seeing earlier was the live video feed and um, what you are seeing right now is the processed image and um, yeah, I just left the audio on the last uh, on the live feed that was just me talking to my four year old daughter. She was very happy to you know look at all the planets. So, uh, the processing for Jupiter also I used auto stockard and then Registax uh, for further. So, on this image, you can see the, uh, the bands separated out clearly and also uh, the great red spot in towards the top left so yeah that's it next we will take a look at uh, Mars and for the Mars video we will uh, take a look at how to process that video feed so this is the Mars video feed which I took uh, last year and it was almost at the closest closest approach to Earth and 
so it was a great experience because the first time that I actually recorded mass I could barely see it as a dot and um, at that time I think I guess it was at the farthest point from earth and in this case I had a better scope so which is a 6 inch scope compared to the 5 inch that I had earlier and in this one in this video you can actually see make out the polarized cap on the right edge you can see that white spot so this was actually a great experience for me to actually be able to see Mars like this for the first time. Um, so the distance between Mars and Earth varies uh, and there's a two year cycle so every two years it comes closest to the Earth and as you can see in this graph uh, from Wolfram Alpha so um, right now uh, it's actually almost at the farthest but uh, around the same time last year it was at the closest approach to earth so you have to plan like that for mars when you plan to image mars or to view mars it's always better to you know view it when it's on the closest approach to earth so this is the, what the processed image of mars looks like um, so towards the end of this video uh, we will uh, take a look at um, how we can process the video footage and uh, how we got this image so let's just take a look at um, the video footage of Saturn and the processed image for that before we uh, move on to the uh, software tools. So this is the uh, video feed for Saturn. Uh, with Saturn I usually make this mistake of uh, trying to record with too high of a magnification. So what happens in that case is that the data is not good enough to generate images but uh, luckily I have a few of these clips uh, where the magnification is okay and uh, uh, it is bright enough for the software to actually pick up the data and generate an image out of it. So in the processed image, we can just about make out the outer A ring and the inner brighter B ring and just about make out the Cassini division that separates uh, the two. Um, you can also make out some bit of patterns on the, uh, on the main planet itself. So with this I think we will move on to the um, software that I use for processing the planetary movies and images okay so the first software that uh, I use is called Astro PIP P -I -P -P. so it's a planetary imaging preprocessor okay developed by Chris Gary this is the website and basically you can check it out or just google it and you should be able to download it for free uh, so the main thing that this software does is to basically convert the MOV file which if you are using uh, a camera like uh, Nikon or something or PSLR uh, probably it will be generating an MOV file. So that needs to be converted to, to an AVI for it to be able to be used as input in the other programs like AutoStarCard or Digistax. Uh, apart from that this has some options. In processing where we can actually reduce the size of the frame so that also will speed up processing uh, ahead you know so let's add a image for a video file here I'm going to go with the Mars file okay. with the output options Sorry, processing options. It is a, a planet, so I'll choose this as object planetary. I will say enable object detection. So you saw that the since I was moving the uh, telescope around, uh, so the object was not really centered. So it was going all over the place. So I will say enable object detection and center the object in each frame. And I'll also say enable cropping. So this way the size of the AVI that is generated is smaller and uh, therefore processing ahead will be faster. So that's it and uh, I'm going to say start processing. Uh, 
Okay, so the next program that we will use is called Auto Stackward. It's developed by Emil Crycam, and it's also free software. And basically, the uh, ABI file that we generated with uh, Astro PIPP, we will actually open that here. So this was the ABI file that we generated earlier. Let's open this. And okay. So here we can see that uh, it's really brought the uh, the video file size down and so this will make the processing a lot more faster okay so here we will select that it is a planet obviously and i'm just going to leave this as it is and i'm going to click analyze i'm just going to say place the uh, ap grid so that will create the grid points here on its own and uh, then I'm going to click on stack. So I've selected that I want 20% of the best quality frames to be selected. The output image will be of TIF format. You can select PNG also if you want. And uh, I've selected normalized stack and I'm just going to click stack. So this will start processing the video to generate a single image from that video using the best 20 frames. Okay, so now the stacking is done. It's been processed. And uh, you can basically go to the, uh, out the, there's an output folder and you can uh, select and open the image from there, which I will do just now, just give me a second. The, so this is the output that we uh, got using uh, auto stacker. Now we can process this further to improve the clarity and bring out some of the features using uh, Registax, which I will show just now. Uh, using Registax version 6. This is also free software developed by Core. So, and you can, uh, you can just search for it and you should be able to find it and download it. I'm going to open the image file that we just generated. So, yeah, so we have to open the wavelet section and here we can do further processing so there are various options here you can play around with it and try to see what brings out the details that you want in the image so let's see here so you can see there are details that are starting to pop out here The various other tools over here, and there are things like the histogram, so which I will adjust further to bring out further details in the image. Right. So this is how you can process further process, um, you know, images of the planetary videos that you take. So you can clearly see the uh, the uh, polar ice cap here, plus some of the features on the ocean surface. So I think this was just after the dust storm, so it's not too clear, but well, I mean, you, you can still see, make out the patterns on the surface with uh, the data that I've got. So, so this is how I usually process the image. Another way you can process um, the video file is to just use Registax alone and I'm not using AutoStacker, but usually it's easier to just use AutoStacker and then go with this. I'm going to select the ABI file and it, it opens in Registax and 
so it, it has opened the ABI file and register tags and we can select a good frame from here. I'm just scrolling through this. Okay, so I'm going to use this, uh, uh, this particular frame to set the align points. So let's set it up in a couple of places. And then we can click align and I've selected for the best 12% of the frames uh, to be used. So we will align it. And it is processing here. So it has done the alignment. Now we will limit the frame. So it will take the best quality frames out of those. And then we will stack it. And this is the stacked image output that Registax has generated. Then again, we will go to the wavelet and then uh, continue with further processing to bring out the features. So let's see. So basically, uh, as you can see, you can play around these settings and come out with uh, an image as well. So here, here also you can see the polar cap and some surface features over here. So yeah, I think that's what that's what I usually do, and I am also still learning. So there's a lot of stuff that I don't know, and I don't know all the options in these softwares either. So I also try out and just try to get uh, the best image that I can. Thanks for watching and um, I hope you liked it. Um, if so, please subscribe, uh, like the video and leave me a comment. If you have any critical feedback too, please let me know. And uh, thank you for watching.